Good day and a warm welcome to everybody who joins us for this information session about career advice and study advice from the University of Pretoria. My name is Peter Klaassen. I'm from the Student Recruitment Division in the Department of Enrollment and Student Administration at the University of Pretoria. My team and I are privileged to be able or to be in a position to give guidance to young people from school, learners already from grade nine, but also then up to grade 11 and 12 to give sound and valuable study and career advice to make sure that learners will end up in successful careers one day. So I'm very grateful for the grade 11 learners and their parents and also teachers who join us this day. And I really hope that the guidance that we are going to give from the side of the university will be to your benefit. Now often, and you will realize that grade 11s to make a career and a study choice is quite an important decision, an important choice in your life. Because you are going to prepare and you start preparing yourself now at this stage already for a career where you are supposed to be happy for 30, 40 years after your studies. And that's quite an important decision that you have to take. Now, often people say, but that is not a difficult. I, I, they wait until they are in grade 12, and then they have a look at what is available, and then based on certain considerations, they make this choice. But that's not always a wise choice. And that is why I say, be wise in making a responsible study choice. You will know a lot of people when they get to grade 12 and they have to think about the study career or study program, they immediately think about in what kind of career will I be able to make a lot of money one day. All of us wants to make a lot of money one day, but it shouldn't be your only primary consideration. Because someone might shout out, listen, become a CA or become an engineer and you are going to make a lot of money one day. That may be true. But the point is, are you going to be happy in a career like that, even if you are going to make a lot of money? But of course, I can tell you, it's a nightmare to wake up in the mornings and think, I hate my job. I don't want to go there. And from the University of Pretoria side, our experience every year is that there's too many students ending up in their first years of study, and then after a week or two or three, they suddenly realize, listen, I'm in the wrong study program. And then they start panicking. They want to make drastic moves and change from one program to another program, become a psychological issue. And unfortunately, quite a number of those students then drop out. So it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. And the big reason for that is people don't think and they don't plan properly. So during my session today, I would like to share with you a way of making sure in certain steps that at the end you will not be disappointed and that you will be able to make a responsible and a wise choice. And it's all about where you start your planning. This should be your first step in this whole process of deciding about a study choice. This is the point where you should start. First at the career because you cannot decide on a study program if you don't know where you are heading towards. And what kind of career would you like to find yourself for 30 or 40 years after studies? And that is often the problem. When learners get to grade 12, even in grade 11 when they have to decide, they grab a booklet of an institution and they start looking at study programs. You know, a BEC this, a BCom that, but they don't really have an idea to what kind of career is this study pro program going to take me? And that is crucial. So you'll have, to, you'll have to take time to decide first on the career, and then it will be much easier at the end to, start to decide on a study program that will bring me to this career. But I'm going to elaborate a little bit on that. The next step, obviously, and I want to mention it again, work hard academically. I can't emphasize this enough. It's no use. You decide on a career, you decide on a study program, but at the end, you don't, minim, you don't meet the minimum achievement levels to get you into that program. 
And grade 11, remember, one of the most important exams in your life will be this year, the grade 11 end exam result. Because in grade 12, most of you will apply for study programs in the following year, and we are going to look at your grade 11 end exam result. We are not looking at grade 12 mid-year results. So put in an effort, make sure academically you do the best that you can at the end of this year. Right, and the last step then to get into a university or into a program on your way to your successful career, you will have to qualify for admission. There's a lot of information shared already with you about our admission requirements, so you will just have to make sure that you meet the minimum subject requirements, the APS requirements, all those kind of things. But I'm going to concentrate today on that specific step to decide on what study program you would like to do. Now, let me go back to the career. That is where the starting point is. This is so important because I believe all of you want to be in a career one day where you are going to be successful, but not only successful, where you will be happy. It is not the case at the university that it's only people that were among the top five or the top ten academic achievers at school that is successful at the university. Success stories at the universities are from those students that enter study programs that they are really interested in. Because those people are passionate, they are motivated, they enjoy studying, because that thing that they are studying suits their interest, their aptitude, their personality, their work ethics, their personal vision. And if you do that, it will also not be a problem for you later on to specialize, maybe in an honors and a master's degree, to better and to improve your chances of getting employment one day. So yes, money, job opportunities, all those things are important, but it shouldn't be your only consideration. Now you may tell me, okay, that's good to say that, but I don't know what career I would like to go into. There's so many of them. Yes, you are right, but I'm going to show you a way to discover all these careers that you don't know about and you've got some time now, you are in grade 11 now, to browse through these careers, and at the end, you will get to that career that will tick your interest and that will make it easy for you to make that choice. And then the challenge is done, then you can just go back and say, listen, I've done my homework, I want to become an architect, just for an example, therefore I must study architecture, and that is the application process. The next thing that I would like to warn you against is the whole issue about people getting to university with a perception about a career. And why do they have perceptions of careers? Because they read about careers, they watch TV and they see kind of snippets, you know, snippets from what is happening in a career, and based on that, they make their decision about the career that they would like to do. Until they get to the university, and then they suddenly realize, listen, I just have the exciting part of this career in my head, but there's another other part here that I don't like at all. So before you go to the university, before you make that important decision, you must make sure that you know as much as possible of that career. And I don't have to tell you, if you watch television, for instance, uh, law is a very popular program at the university because we've got all these interesting forensic programs, you know, and the advocates in the courtrooms fighting cases, so interesting. But that child, that learner, when they get to the university, they forgot two things. And the one thing is that most of the people that go into a law kind of program will never end up in the courtroom. Because maybe they will sit behind desks doing administrative work. But the television is not telling you that. The other thing that they realize with a nasty surprise is in order for that advocate to get to the courtroom, his actual job is reading. Because he must read difficult legal documents, build this case, analyze, before you can go and present that case in the courtroom. And maybe you realize then suddenly, listen, I hate reading. I didn't like it at all. I can promise you, you are not going to be happy in that career or in that study field. But again, we've got the solution for this. And the solution is in job shadowing. Please make the time. The moment you identify certain careers that you are interested in, Contact a person that is already in that career and go and talk to that sir. 
Sir, ma'am, I'm interested in what you are doing. This is what I know about the career that you are in now. Just tell me. What's the good things about this career? What is the not so good things about this career? What is the international accreditation? Can I go overseas with this career? What are the job opportunities in South Africa? What salaries are we talking about? Am I going to work with people? I'm going to work outside? All those kind of questions. Someone that is already in the career will openly and honestly give you answers to all your questions and at the end of that conversation, you will either decide, no, listen, I had a wrong perception of this career, let's put it aside. Or you will decide, this is exactly what I would like to do. And now I'm even more motivated and now it's easy for me to make a study choice. The advantage that you guys have at this stage, you still have a year, or not a year, a full year, but you still have some time to do job shadowing and to make sure. Let us get practical, and this is where I would like to go because I want to share with you an easy way of going around and exploring careers, because that is the starting point. Now, I'm sure all of you know about the PACE career interest questionnaire, and that would be the starting point. So if you go to www.gostudy.net forward slash UP, you get a customized uh, uh, image of the PACE career on the University of Pretoria website. There you can see right on the home page, there's a career questionnaire that you are going to complete. That is the first step. Very simple, very easy to complete. There's 105 questions that you are just going to answer yes or no to. It's going to take you 10 minutes, but at the end, you are going to get quite a reliable uh, reflection of your fields of interest that will lead us then towards careers that you may be interested in. So first, after our session, go and complete this questionnaire. Moment you've done that, I'm going to show you or share with you two examples just to explain how you interpret these fields of interest now. There's an example now of a person who completed this questionnaire, and you can see in this case, this grade 11 learner is very focused. You can just see it if you look at the graph. There's one field of interest standing out, 100%, and that is information technology. So I believe this student will be interested in a career one day where IT will be a big part of this career. Maybe it can be become computer science, becoming a programmer, whatever the case will be, we will get to that. But also interesting here is to look at the combinations. You will also see his interest in marketing and sales, management and planning, finance, also up there. Now, if you look at the combination, the marketing and management and, and the finance, it shows typically towards a career in a commercial field, a BCom degree where finances is going to play a part, uh, management is going to play a part, etc. And if you look at the combination with the IT, for instance, at the University of Pretoria, we have a program that we call BCom Informatics, where you combine the IT programming part, uh, side with the business side. There's no interest, if you look at this graph, of this specific person want to go in the health sciences or engineering, so you get a lot of guidance as to what you should look at when we get to the careers. Let's look at a second ex example of someone who completed this questionnaire before we are going to show you how to get then to the careers. This is a typical uh, graph that we get from a student in grade 11 that is really quite not sure at this stage about what career they would like to follow. Because you can see he's got a very broad field of interest. There's two things showing 100, three things showing 80%, and five showing 60%. So this person is quite confused. But at least we can see that he's interested in plants, plants and animals, health sciences. If you combine those two, it may be something like veterinary science, or it may be something in the sciences where you look at nutrition of animals. Uh, it may be in the health sciences, medicine. And so we can, down, we can go down the list there, and you can see in each one of those fields of interest, there will be careers popping out that they maybe go and have a look at. Now, this is exactly the aim of this exercise. So in the case of this person, it's going to be very, very valuable 
to go to each and every one of these fields of interest and go and have a look what careers are available. And how about the cool part of this program? Because often it stops here, and now they expect of you, you must now make a decision. And you can understand, in this case, it will be very difficult. What you can do now on this, while you are on, your, while you are on the uh, computer, you've done your questionnaire, you get this graph, now you can just go and click on each one of these fields of interest to get access then to all the careers in that field of interest. Let's take for one example. In the case that we have in front of us, plants and animals is quite a, a field of interest that this person is interested in. So he will now go and click on plants, of, plants and animals, and that is what you will get. The moment you click on that field of interest, you will get the occupations, the careers, that is specifically within the plants and animals field of interest. And there's a list. I only listed six there because of uh, the space. But there's three pages of careers within the plants and animals field of interest. Some of those careers you will know of. But I'm sure, and I can guarantee you, there's going to be careers there that you have never heard about. And the whole idea for you is now to browse through these careers, especially those that you haven't seen yet, and you didn't know about these careers, and then when you click on each one of them, you get short, concise, interesting information, not boring things. Interesting information that will tell you exactly what is this person doing, and that will give you information, enough information, to decide I want to do that, or I don't want to do that. So the whole idea is to start looking at the careers, eliminate the things that you are not interested in, and identify those careers that really tick your interest. In that way, you will scale down all your choices, and when the time after job shadowing, etc., when you get to the beginning of grade 12 and you have to decide, you will know which career is your preferred career. Let us take an example. Plants and animals. If you scroll down there, one that you will come up is a herpetologist. Now, I'm not sure whether you know what a herpetologist is. I didn't know at first. But the moment I click on herpetologist, there's the information that you will get, and you will see those are people that is interested in working with snakes and reptiles and frogs and those kind of things. It's a specialized field. So to study that program, you will have to do a BSc zoology program at the university. And those people are doing a lot of research on uh, the health issues and etc., etc., about these reptiles. Now, after two sentences that you've read there, you will know whether you are interested or not. If not, you're not going to waste time. You skip that one and you go to the next career. Very valuable also, you will see there on the right hand, is a video clip that you can click on and the little video that will explain to you what a herpetologist is really doing. I didn't include it on this slide, but other useful information on each one of these careers. If you scroll down at a career, you will see it gives you the characteristics of a person that is usually in this career. So in this case, it will say you must be interested in insects. You must be research oriented. Those kind of interest. Scrolling further down, it will tell you exactly, okay, if you are interested in this career, what do you need to study then? And it will tell you you must do BSc Zoology at the university, and in most cases they also tell you which universities offer this program. And then a very, very useful thing that you will get under a heading, further information, where they give you the professional body's contact details. Remember what I said about job shadowing? If you are really interested in this field, you would like to talk to someone that is a herpetologist. And if you don't know where to get someone like this, the professional body, contact details that they give you, that is your answer. You will phone these people because they've got databases of their people countrywide. You will tell them, listen, I'm here in uh, Limpopo. Can you give me the contact details of the closest herpetologist to my location here? They give you a telephone number or email address, you contact this person, and then you can have a discussion. Right at the bottom of each one of these careers, you will also see there's other options. Careers 
that are very much similar to a herpetologist, but it is not really the herpetologist. So there can be, uh, you know, all kind of other people working with birds, for instance, or agricultural fields with, with domestic animals. The whole point that I would like to bring across is the information is there. More than enough for you to decide which career you would like to follow one day. And then grade 11s, once you are there, then it's simple. Then you're just going to say next year, right, I've done my homework, I've browsed through the careers, I know now I want to follow career number X, and from 1 March next year, you will then apply for a program that will bring you to that career. That's the simple part. It's an online application, and you can't make a mistake in this way. I really hope that this session was valuable to you, that you can use the information. Please also from our side, an open invitation to contact us at the University of Pretoria, to speak to some of our student advisors, to come for campus visits so that we can assist you in any which way to make sure that at the end you will have a good learning experience at the University of Pretoria. Thank you very much.